Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I speak of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears have heard you, but now my eyes have seen you. We now go to First Peter chapter 4 from verse 15 to 19. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome? For those who do not obey the gospel of God, and if it is hard, for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We be upstanding to welcome the gospel. The gospel of our salvation as recorded in the gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 25 to verse 33. The gospel of our salvation as recorded in the gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 25 to 33. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father. In that day, you will ask in my name, I'm not saying that I will ask for the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus, Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all the things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe? Jesus replied. A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And this is the gospel of our salvation. Let us appreciate our praise team. Uh, I really thank God because of the work that you are doing. And one thing I've noted, that you are very, very decent. They are presentable, and I really thank God because of that. Keep up, and God continue to bless you. Thank you, our choir. You always do it, and I really thank God because of your commitment. Thank you, everyone else, because uh, at least today, 80% we are here on time. Praise be to God. I do observe, and I really thank God because I, I'm a timekeeper myself. I keep time, and I thank God because of seeing most of you keeping time. So that at least we can come and share the word of God. I'm Joseph Washira. I'm born again. I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior. He has been so faithful unto me since the last time we met. And I really thank God because he has preserved our lives. As the intercessory prayers have said, he has preserved our lives. And when we talk about preservation, I always I remember the refrigerators that we have at home. They preserve food. The same way God preserves your life, meaning amidst all many things that can spoil you, that can kill you, that can destroy you, 
God has preserved your life. Praise be to God. So you have all the reason to praise God. And I remember the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 36. Uh, 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 the, the, the Bible says that David, when he had served God's purposes, then he died and was buried. It was after he had served. God preserves you always for a purpose and with a purpose. So you are alive today because God is not yet done with you. You may, you, you may do away with yourself, but if God is not done with you, you are going to live. I remember I got a story from one of our Agrican members here in our diocese. I only mentioned the Archdeacon of the praise, but he called me and told me he tried even to commit suicide. Akatebea kwa barabara, kwanza ile highway, ile Great North Road. Akatebea kwa barabara katikati, magaliota ikamuotokea. Akaruka, akakogwa tu magoti na akapona. Yani, he tried everything. Akajaribu kunywa dawa, akajipata asubuya kwa very sober. He, he, he didn't die because God is not yet done with him. So it is high time you realize it is God who preserves your life and your duty is to ask, why has God preserved my life this far? There is that, this old woman who was more than 100 from our village and then Every morning around 5 a.m., she could shout, Wewe mungu, kwani ulisahau na mimi? Kwani fairo yangu ilisahaulika? Akisikia wasichana wadogo wanakufa na uliza, Mungu, uliacha yangu, ukachukua ya mtoto mudogo. Kwani fairo yangu ilieda wapi? Ama nyumba yangu ulipatia watu wa vivu wa zebe ya wajai maliza kujega. And then she could complain. And one day I visited her and I told her, When God is not yet done with you, you are going nowhere. And after that, she lived two more years. And then she died. Praise be to God. So it is God who has preserved us. It is God who has a reason as to why you are still living and breathing today. This morning, uh, this is the month of uh, July, and in our diocese, the theme has been, why does God allow suffering? Why does God allow suffering? And that will be the topic of today as we conclude that theme in the whole of diocese, I've been preaching in several places, and this is now like my part four. So the other parts, you can find them on my YouTube or elsewhere. But it is good to understand that the topic has been, why does God allow suffering? And it is a very, very interesting topic, because one thing that we come to realize out of that topic, why does God allow suffering, we come to realize, number one, he allows Number two, it is not necessarily him that brings suffering upon us. Those are two things that you need to note, that it is him and only him who can allow. Number two, it is not necessarily him who brings suffering on us. But when he allows suffering, it has a certain purpose. And that is what I want to address today. And I know you are going to be blessed of the Lord. The reference for the whole diocese of this month has been the book of Job, chapter 42. That is the last chapter. But if you can visit the first chapter of Job from verse 8 to 10, we heard that uh, from the word of God, that when uh, the sons of God gathered in the presence of God, the Bible says Satan was also in the midst. Satan was also present. And I always caution brothers and sisters that the Bible in the book of Revelation, the Bible calls Satan the accuser of brethren. So you can, ima you can imagine if your accuser is appearing more oftenly before God more than you do. When you become a prayerless Christian, you don't appear before God frequently. Then you give your, ad your adversary, you give your enemy an upper hand. The Bible says that when the sons of God gathered before God, Satan was there. And then Satan was asked by God, where are you coming from? And he said, I'm coming to and fro from the world. Na diona abiyaka watu, iya roho ya kuulizwa na mtu, umekua wapi, humu humu tu. Yani iyo roho haikuwa gia mugu, kolioga, nyuma kolioga, iyo ni roho ya shetani. You must purpose where you are going. I remember there is a cousin of my mom, I can call him my uncle. He used to ask me, akiona ni mengara, ni meenda, na niuliza, 
uh, umesema utokee kama wanaume wengine na hapana sijui wanaitaka wapi i'm going to fellowship myself praise be to god because you don't need just to wander around because the devil was to and fro and about and then he was asked by god have you seen my servant job and you know god is all knowing the devil is not so god knew why he was asking satan have you seen my servant job because he had it in mind god knew satan has been looking for a way to to bring suffering and to torture the life of job that is why god is asking have you seen my servant and he said you are calling him your servant is it not because you have hedged around him is it not that you have blessed all that he has and you have fenced you have fenced around him Mungu akajua oh kumbe umekuwa ukijaribu kupenya penya ukashitwa maana ni mefence let me remind you if you are not aware god has hedged those that he love the bible says it should be Psalm 125 and verse 2 the bible says that just as like jerusalem the way it is surrounded with hills so god surrounds those who love him and those he loves him So if you serve God if you love God then he surrounds you you are surrounded you are hedged around and nothing can come to you unless God allows it to come Last Sunday when we were with bishop with Kama as they were opening the uh, the uh, building at Ruaka I remember I told people the reason as to why God allowed Satan to attack Job because the bible says after satan complained you've hedged around this man that is why i cannot access him if you can allow me to access him he will deny you he will you know he will turn back and then because god had confidence with job and i told people on sunday one of the reasons why god allows suffering he has confidence in you There are some people who cannot allow suffering to come to them because they will deny their faith they will abandon their faith but unto job he was so sure nothing will disconnect job from me and so he told satan in in job chapter 1 and verse 12 you can go touch everything that job has even his own body but don't touch his spirit so god allowed that suffering until he allowed satan could do nothing and it is high time you are, you realize that everything that comes your way even if it is not god who brings it he allows it with his own purpose and i want to teach you four things why god allow suffering four things because whatever comes on your way do not just go through things but learn to grow through everything that you pass through i want to repeat that one again don't just go through usitobi aki nimepitia megi usipitie tu can you grow through whatever you are going through don't just go through if you go through you might probably go back to the same problem again but if you go through and as well grow through then god can have confidence with you and know that my child is maturing you are now on another level you can be promoted and what you went through yesterday you not face it another day you'll fight another higher thing because you did not just go through but you grew through whatever came on your way These are the four things. Number one, God allows suffering for our own discipline. Let me tell you. You may go through stuff. You may go through hard times because God will allow that at least for you to learn from it, for that thing that you are going through to shape you and to align you. You know we have been told even in the secular world that if you don't learn it then you are going to learn it the hard way. The same thing happens with us as Christians. At times God will allow tough situations to come away so that we can learn that hard way. 
A good example is in the book of Ruth, chapter 1 and verse 20. When Ruth, Ruth and Naomi and the family, they were praised by God at a very good place called Bethlehem Judah, meaning house of bread. They were situated there. That's where they were praised by God, Bethlehem Judah, house of bread. But the Bible says there was famine. And when that famine came, the Bible says the family decided to move from the house of blood to Moab. Moab was a cursed city because it was, a, it, was a, it was a product of Lot and his daughters. So they moved from where God has blessed to where God has, had cursed. And when Naomi now is coming back, in Ruth chapter 1 and verse 20, women are jubilating and welcoming Naomi back. But the Bible says, as they were calling, him, uh, calling her Naomi and welcoming her back, Naomi was crying. Naomi was in distress. And he said, and she told them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, because God has dealt with me bitterly. You know, you know why? Because it was part of discipline. He allowed Naomi to move. And when they moved, then she lost the husband. She lost the sons. And she came back with a full lesson. If you want to agree with me, the Bible continues to say that he told them, she told them, after telling them, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. You know, she went ahead and said, I went away full but I came back empty. This is a lesson no one else will teach you unless all, uh, it is only the suffering that you go through will teach you some of these things. Na ukikaa tu hivi mayai mayai bila kujaribiwa na bila kupata mabo magumu kuna mabo hutawa isoma. Even as we have gone to driving school, there are things that the tutor there will never tell you. You learn them the hard way. Kuna mtu takuja tu raini yako na hiyo hukufundishwa wao ulifundishwa keep left. Sasa mwingine amekuja left yako utasema mwalimu alisema tukae left. Sasa utakaa hapo ugogwe. There are things you learn a hard way. <laughs> Praise be to God. So Naomi she had to get this discipline. And she came back with a full lesson. I'm sure if there was another famine he would say if Boaz was here all that time, if other people did not move and we found them harvesting, now we better stick to God. We don't need to move around. We need to be disciplined enough to be patient with God and to wait the blessings of God. It was a discipline learned in a hard way because God would allow suffering so that you can learn, you can get discipline. Some of us, you visit hospital and you have a cough. You have the flu, that flu, and then you are told, please dress warmly. Unakubuka, wewe siku zote na ilikuwa jurai, you have been freeze, freezing and shining, freeze and shine. Kazi yako ni freeze and shine, ignore the weather and be smart. When you catch that flu, you suffer health-wise, you get discipline. Some of us, you eat anything that is laid on the table. Na unasema, ata chuma ikipako ambafuta vizuri, na weza kura. The minute you get health issues, you start getting discipline. <laughs> Praise be to God. There is that company that you keep, and you, you, you are cautioned now and then, please stop that company, and you feel as if it is okay. The minute they, they harm you, the minute they, they, they do anything against your will, or they mislead you, that's the time you learn, and you say, now I have learned. Because God will allow suffering. You'll, uh, you'll encounter hardships here and there so that you can learn from them. There is a, a verse in the Bible, I'm yet to dig deeper. You know myself, I'm not a theologian. I'm a neurologian. Uh, Instead of theologian, we had a neurology. Praise be to God. <laughs> so there is this verse. In the book of John, chapter 5 and verse 14. John 5, 14. The Bible says there was this man who was at a, at a bedside pool for 38 years. And then Jesus 
healed the man. Later they met elsewhere, John 5, 14. And Jesus cautioned the man, sin no more or something worse may happen to you. Does it mean he had sinned? It could be. That is why Jesus is telling him, do not sin. Sin no more or something worse may happen to you. Some of the things we go through, they are meant to discipline us. And it is good to tell God, whatever I go through, it is for a season, it is for a reason, and with a lesson. Not that. Whatever you go through, it is for a season, not forever. It is for a reason, and it is for a lesson. Number two, why God allow suffering? It is for your own disconnection. For God to disconnect you, he allow suffering. And let me tell you, some of us, maybe you have been financially stable. All of a sudden, you find yourself struggling financially. You may not know. God is, does not mean to aid you or to crush you. But there are some people you want to remove from your life. Those who cling to you because of what you can give them financially. Because of what you can do unto them. Ni kama ida kichungi. Wakati umesota sana, umekosa kitu ya kuwapatia. Mugu diyo anaodoa wale watu. Mana awana haja na wewe tena. You become sick and you realize who are true friends that you have. Because God wants to disconnect you with those people. You find yourself in a situation, you need an urgent help. There was a time we were, we were, we were at a certain seminar in Zika. It was a, a, it was a inter, interdenom seminar for preachers. And then I presented myself there. And then we were given a very serious thing. We were told, write to five saved people and tell them you need 1,000 urgently. Five people, five saved people. And then write the same SMS to five unsaved people and see who will respond. And that is what we did. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, or fortunately, because God brings this so that he can disconnect you from fake and whatever friends. Then, they all give excuses. Moja na ah, I wish ukesema 245. Two... <laughs> And then we were taught how we have friends that does not help you. Because there are some situations that come so that they can reveal who you are, who you are true friends are and the people to associate with. When Abraham was leaving his, his, his own place where he was brought up and then he was told by God, leave your people, leave your country. He went ahead and dragged along Lot, his nephew. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter 13, verse 8, there arose quarrel between the headsman of Lot and the headsman of Abraham. And they started fighting. And that is where, verse 9, the Bible says, Abraham stood and told Lot, we cannot continue fighting. If you go left, I go right. If you go right, I go left. This suffering came to them. This contention came to them because God wanted to ensure he accomplished the mission he had with Abraham when he is disconnected. Praise be to God. And at this high time you realize some of the things we go through, they are meant to disconnect us. Number three, God allows suffering because of the duty ahead the duty that he has for each and every one of us. Imagine God has, you have that calling, there is that responsibility, there is that assignment that God has for us. And because of that duty, God may bring suffering to kick you out of the comfort zone. Hey, before I bring my own case, let me bring the biblical perspective. Jonah, the prophet in the Old Testament, Jonah chapter 1 and verse 4, the Bible says, and the Lord caused a great weed, and the Lord caused, not, not the devil, God caused a great weed, because Jonah was sent to Nineveh, and he decided to go to Tarshish, and
And the Bible says the Lord was not happy. He was following Jonah because he had us an assignment, an assignment for him. But he is choosing the other way. And the Bible says he caused because he wanted to make sure that Jonah landed where he wanted him to be. Nata wakati alimezo wa nasamaki, mugu aliakikisha ametapikwa mahali mugu alimtaka uko ni neve. Why? Sometimes we had to go through stuffs because God wants to kick you out of your comfort zone so that you can reach where he wants you to be responsible and where you, he wants you to carry out the assignment. If you read Acts chapter 8, it should be verse 1, Acts chapter 8. If you remember after the Pentecost, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and then they preached so many God saved, they were they, they, they constrained themselves in a, they confined themselves in a certain area where they were just breaking bread, you know, fellowship, enjoying the warmth. And then Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. The Bible says tribulations came and they were scattered all over. Kukakuja mawibi ikawa And the Bible says in Acts chapter 8 and verse 4, they preached Christ wherever they went. Mana mungu alileta misuka suko. Iri kila moja kapereke ijiri. Kama wakashita hapo kazi yao nukutoa ushuda. Praise God. I'm good. Jesus is Lord. Eh, yesterday I saw him with my son. He did this to my family. Iri kila siku ni ushuda. Kila siku ni mungu ametenda. Mungu amefanya. Akajua hawa hakuna siku wataubiri. Akareta munga wanyiko misuka suko. And then we are scattered. Sometimes when you go through stuffs, ask yourself, is God looking for me because of a certain assignment? There's a woman in this diocese, I won't mention where, she was a treasurer to Mother's Union and secretary to the choir. And then all of, all of a sudden, she said, I'm not going to serve. And then I told her, you are, you are joking with, with God. You are trying God because God has preserved you. As I started by saying, God has preserved all of us for his own purpose. And maybe you have what you have today because of what God wants you to do. You are enabled. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, God is able to, to make grace abide so that having all that you need, all the time you may be doing the good works. So God has a purpose for us. And when you decide otherwise, suffering may come your way, like the case of Jonah, the case of the apostles. Now your mama, mikono ilianza kulegea, ikalegea hivi. Ata kufua guo ilikuwa shida. Kuchuga chai, hivyo tu kushika hiyo kichugi, ilikuwa shida. Mana alikuwa mekata kazi ya mugu. Na mekata, na nikamwabia dawa si gine, ni kurudia kazi ya mugu. I'm not selling any fear, but if I sell it, and it is worth it to change you, buy some. <laughs> Praise be to God. Myself, as I start here, I started with a, I started with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, a, a cafeteria at Kabete, Kabete Shopping Center. That is where I started. I think it was 209. I started there, and the, 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 the cafeteria was named, you know, uh, Go, uh, Christ Within. Christ Within. You know, I was, I was trying to show Jesus we are still together. Although I'm here, you know, cooking some pichipo and cuckoos, uh, we are still together. Christ Within. Kube na ya atoshai kwa madazi. Iyo kazi iliisha the way I cannot explain. Because he brought that suffering. Na juzi tukutana mse na moja wagia kani ya pia pasta bado huko ya akitulikuibia hile hoteli. <laughs> na naniyabia ukipata kazi higida uniyabia. Kasi wezi kuwabia muizi. Ulikuwa na niyabia, unyaniibia, rafu niyabia ni kutafutia kazi. So, I was kicked out of comfort zone. And so then after some time, I moved to Kitare town where I was ministering the word of God for almost two years. When I was there, I decided to quit and said, no, I will not serve again. And I started executive kinyozi, executive. Vida ni kuja kuyuza ata sahi sijai ripua. That was 2012, sijai ripua ata sahi. Then I came down to Naivasha and I said, this is where, by the way, in 2012, I said, I'm going to start my own ministry now. Sani me choka kuitaitu, anataka ministry yaku. Let me tell you, I suffered. I, I targeted 300,000 to start my ministry. I only got 40,000. Nikaanza beauty shop. 
beauty shop hata kuuza nywele hivi kuuza mafuta zilikuwa zimejaa hapo si kuuza kitu because god was calling me it is not necessary that he is calling you as a preacher no maybe you are burden your family you are burden your children you are burden your people and god will bring suffering along your way and you start saying i'm coming home because he is kicking you out of comfort zone wake hapo walipata kazi wakafugia watu wao simu wakatoroka makwao and when god destabilizes you then you are going to come back to your senses isifike hapo may god help you to attend to your duty to your assignment and then finally i came to i came to keno i started another shop hiyo nilijua imeisha wakati niona ni tissue peke yake na chumvi zimebakia sasa hapo niambia mungu 2014 nimeinua mikono sitawaifanya hiyo kazi tena nimeingia kwa huduma na nikaingia kwa huduma and this is where i am praise be to god the last a reason why god allows suffering it is destiny destiny wow destiny if you read genesis 45 should be verse 8 genesis 45 verse 8 joseph is telling his own brothers you know they were trying as if to show him they are sorry because of what they did to him and joseph is telling them it is not you who brought me here remember it is them who sold him to to Egypt through the Gileadites but the bible says he's telling them it is not you it is the doing of the lord god planned that i'll be destined here because of the dream that joseph had because of the vision that he had god had to take him through suffering to usher him to his destiny some of the things we go through it is to make you realize you are headed somewhere and that is where we got from our reading uh, in our gospel john john 16 and verse 33 jesus is telling them you are going to meet trials and tribulations but i have come the world rejoice i have overcome the world because god knows you are going to overcome you are going to be destined in the heavenly dwellings And so Joseph is saying it is not you although they put him in the pit that is the first p pit that is the suffering he went through pit from pit to potiphar from potiphar to prison from prison to palace this was the process and sometimes we go through process because god wants to destiny you he want to give you your own destiny Sometimes you can be a prophet somewhere na unapata tu madharau tumeingia nini meingia akili yako inakwambia na siwezi anza kazi yako kama hii At times you are in rental houses you know I was making people love Arasande at PCA it is still in my YouTube na nilikuwa naambia watu ndio nikuje kujega ile kitu niambia Mungu Mungu tu nipatie nyumba Mungu tu nipatie nyumba unatoka meeting kama hii saa zingine naendaga four places one Sunday una preach unaenda umechoka then of a sudden unasikia kiateka na itana mkutano unasikia nani ni mtoto wa nani amekuni ya pale sasa unashindwa shuali shuali no some of the things are meant to take you to kick you out of that comfort zone and you get you are on destiny na unaambia mungu ningetaka kazi yangu judas mama pale there was a time i was employed at a, a place called brookside na watu wakileba nyeusi sio naitwa aje au watu huyo mtu alikuwa ananiita for no reason ananitusi ananitusi joseph who do you think you are what do you have you know ananitusi siku moja nilimwambia my integrity my dignity is far much paramount than what you give me i got be me utanitusi tena na nikaacha hiyo kazi nikaenda no sometimes you go through things so that you can be assured to your own destiny na ni vizuri kujiuliza when you are not comfortable maybe they are haunting you you have been tormented now and then you have been insulted you are mishandled what is god saying through whatever you are going through could that be he want to assure you to your own praise kuna siku one of my reverend Uh, a friend uh, a reverend uh, who is my friend in kirinyaga diocese kuna wakati alinulia boys wake wawili mattress akanulia kila mtu matresi yake 
msichana mwenye alikuwa amemaliza college akamwambia dadi unanunulia hawa nawe mimi huwezi kununulia akamwambia ni kununulia mattress uishi huku wewe eda ufanye ka upate kazi na uolewe siwezi kukunulia mattress i'll make you more comfortable here utasahau kuoleka so some of the things they are pushing you to your destiny wale wasiana huku mko huku munisamee sijasema msinunulie mattress praise be to god <laughs> but there's there are some things that are meant to usher you to your destiny if you read psalm 66 and verse 12 the bible says that we passed through waters and through fire but you brought us to a place of abundance praise be to god so whatever you go through ask yourself because our god is so loving our God does not only torture you, he doesn't bring it to you to kill you. And I told people on Sunday, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you strong. So at times when you go through stuff, and that is why our second reading from the book of 1 Peter, we were told, suffer as a Christian. Because a Christian that does not suffer aimlessly, does not suffer in vain. You suffer for a divine purpose, which is, number one, discipline number two disconnection number three duty and number four destiny may god bless you